Hello, my name is Keetana and I'm the technical author for Unbox Cloud. Today, I'm going to present the overview of Unbox Cloud 1.26.0 release along with my teammates. This is a minor release, which means it includes both features and bug fixes. The release notes has a consistent structure that tells you about the release, the requirements of the product and new features and a little bit down deprecations, known issues, and the bug fixes and CEVs that are included, and at last, the upgrade instructions. So let's now first have a look at the new features. Unbox Cloud's 1.26.0 release brings us new features in various parts of the stack. In terms of deployment, uh, Unbox Cloud introduced the use of a Terraform plan for deployment, replacing the traditional bundles. We hope that this will simplify infrastructure management and enable automated deployments across environments. This is an alpha release for the Terraform plan, and there are breaking changes planned for future releases. Uh, so it's not recommended to use the Terraform plan yet in production, but soon it will be ready. And there's a slight change in how deployment happens after validating your Ubuntu Pro subscription. Uh, before this release, without the pro subscription, the deployment would fail. However, with this release, the deployment proceeds with a warning. The change allows us to work better, better with integrating open source charms. Remember that without the pro subscription, you won't be able to access the Unbox Cloud images even if the deployment finishes. And it's exciting that Unbox Cloud charms now have support for Noble Numbat. And there are a couple of enhancements to the appliance. So for the appliance deployment, service restarts uh, ask for confirmation, but you won't be disturbed if you are using non-interactive mode. You can use the no restart flag to disable automatic restart of AWS and other required services if you are going to be using non-interactive mode. And the other small change for the appliance is that the init process provides better guidance on what storage uh, what block devices are acceptable. And lastly, in the deployment uh, section, uh, initial support for Juju secrets management allows secure handling of uh, sensitive data. Uh, so let's move on to instance management. So the updates to your instant management experience are that uh, there's a flag for specifying your GPU type when launching an instance. There's an upgrade for the default NVIDIA driver version. And the management service can now automatically determine if your instance is based on an application or an image so that you don't have to use the raw flag every time you launch an instance. And yeah, with respect to logging, you can change the Unbox log level at runtime using the API provided. There are quite a few enhancements to the Unbox Cloud dashboard. I think the important ones are that you can customize instance resources easily, and you can use uh, IDPs such as Keycloak, Hydra, and you can revoke a session share uh, that you did using the Android debug bridge. And you can also extend the validity of a share. Basically, you can extend the expiration date of a session that you have shared with somebody. Then we come to images. We have the VM images using hardware enablement kernels now. And we have Unbox Cloud images for Android 15. All Android images are also cleaned up a bit to remove unnecessary packages or rather unused packages. Finally, there are some streaming enhancements with respect to WebRTC, and uh, you can disable certain video codecs. And let's quickly have a look at the rest of the release notes. There is a deprecation called out for the AMS node controller charm, which means that this will become unsupported in 128.0. And uh, the installation of the node controller snap uh, will be handled by the AMS LexD charm instead of a separate AMS node controller charm. Uh, check out the deprecation notices for more uh, details. And this release comes with a few known issues. And the fixes for these can be expected in the upcoming patch release next month. 
And in addition to the uh, bug fixes so far on, this release also includes fixes for many CVEs from the various upstream projects. And with that, I will now hand it over to the rest of my team for demos. Hello, everybody. I am Simon Feltz, an engineer manager for the Mbox team here at Canonica. And I would like to show two new features we have for um, the Nbox Cloud Water 26 version. Um, the first I would like to show is support for both Android 15 and iOS 15. Um, so those look as usual, like a standard AOSP build from, from the upstream Google project. Um, we have enabled and integrated into Nbox Cloud with all of the usual features uh, we have supported across all of the other versions of Android. Um, with no difference in terms of functionality, um, you can use them as of today as a replacement uh, for the other images we also still support. Um, both images are listed when you create a new instance, so you will find the AOS 15 and also the Android 15 image. The next feature which we have been working on for, for quite a while is actually Terraform support for Nbox Cloud. Um, so the deployment of Nbox Cloud has so far always, always been done through the use of bundles from the Juju uh, project, uh, where bundles is a simplified version um, of, of how the deployment should look like based in a YAML written format. Um, Terraform, though, provides a lot more capabilities in terms of uh, structuring and also laying out the concrete infrastructure with also the necessary integration into uh, specific cloud environments like AWS or Google Cloud or even your on-prem OpenStack. Um, so we have been working on a Terraform module for the entirety of Nbox Cloud, which comes with support for uh, production features like high availability and other aspects. Um, we have now released with 126 an initial alpha version of the plan, which is not yet considered ready for production, um, but we have uh, released it for, for initial feedback and for you to try it out. Our documentation has been updated with the necessary inter information on how you can make use of the Terraform module in your own um, deployments. It's looking and working the same as any other Terraform module you have been using before. Um, so basically, you provide some kind of initial configuration um, with the variables you pass to Terraform, which both specify like the, the want to pro token you need for Nbox Cloud, which architecture you want to deploy on, um, which channel of um, the charms you actually want to do. And then the neat thing which you can do with the Terraform model is it can also deploy a set of what we call subclusters, where each of these subclusters basically defines a single leg D cluster, which can host like up to 40, 50 individual nodes. So like basically giving you the, um, the immediate kind of capabilities of scaling your deployment out. And you can also update this plan as, as, as you go to add new subclusters if you have a higher demand for, for higher capacity. And then basically the deployment goes to the usual kind of Terraform steps, like you plan, um, you apply, and then after some time, you will get the entirety of the Nbox Start deployment running. Like things are split across two, um, two Juju models, basically just structure things a bit better. Like we have one for the actual control plane, which includes um, the gateway, the nets, uh, messaging queue, and the UI. And then we also have like a model per subcluster which then includes, um, as what I described before, the AMS service, a LXD cluster, and other necessary accelerator components. The documentation also covers like um, necessary information on how you scale this out, um, how you enable HA or deploy the Nbox application registry, or also um, how you enable support for the canonical observability stack. Um, the entire module is available in a GitHub repository uh, for reference, but also open for contributions. It's still being developed, as I said in the beginning. Um, we are planning to make it stable in a future version of Xbox Cloud. And that's it for my side.